all right guys so this time i'm gonna be a little quick and straightforward and i'm gonna use part which is known by program evolution and review technique this is also known by prt okay and this time you're gonna calculate and we're gonna analyze the critical path of the project using part and then we're gonna calculate the variances in standard deviation of the project and then of course lastly we're gonna calculate the probability of completing the project in 36 days okay so this time we got three types of times one is optimistic and the another one is most likely and then pessimistic okay so we're gonna analyze this project using these three types of times and here we got activities and their predecessors okay so the first thing is you can see we are asked to determine the critical path of the project so in order to determine the critical path of the project we need the mean time okay not these three types of times together can work over here so that's why we need of course the mean time okay we're gonna add these guys and then we're gonna divide it by the number number of times so we can get the mean time okay so let's go ahead and uh, just remember i'm gonna add few columns to this uh, table like the column of time which is mean time and then the float and variances okay per standard deviation we're gonna do it separately or uh, doesn't matter all right so going ahead and i'm gonna calculate the mean time this time as you can see i'm gonna calculate the mean time per activity a which must be a plus four times m plus b divided by six okay a is per optimistic time four m is per the most likely and then b is per pessimistic and as you can see we got uh, one four and one which is six so that's why we are gonna divide this guy with six okay which is just part of the mean time okay so i'm gonna calculate for activity a and then i'm gonna plug all the videos for the remaining one just like that all right so let's say i'm gonna calculate it for the activity a and which is going to be a and that is one this time plus four times m so that's gonna be four times five plus b which is three this time and divided by six and of course we're gonna uh, get the video if we use calculator or just like a mind you can say so i'm gonna plug this video over there in the mean time column a different type activity a and now we can use the same method to determine and calculate the mean time per other activities like per b we can get of course the nine days okay and per c we can get 12 days until i we can do the same method and we can use the same formula now as you can see we got the mean time for each activity that means we can construct the network diagram for the same project okay and i'm gonna do this little quick because i have uploaded a separate video you can watch that okay so this time i'm gonna be a little quick all right as you can see we got the network diagram okay by arrow and nodes and uh, a is the start and i is the end all right and we can just uh, uh, I can just represent this diagram with another uh, format you can say like this one okay having early start early finish late start and late finish okay I have already done this and I have uploaded another video a separate video where we learned the method and the 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 way of calculating early start early finish late start and late finish okay for uh, each activity so you can watch that in order to determine these videos so once we have the network diagram then of course we can determine the critical path okay critical path can be the longest path through a uh, project network you can say okay or uh, if we join the the activities with zero slack or float and that path can be also known by the critical path like in this diagram of course i can say a c f h i can be the critical path okay uh, which of course does have the longest duration and that is 32 days and that is the expected time of the project all right next i'm gonna calculate the float for each uh, activity okay float can be the late start minus early start like if you focus on activity a the late start is zero and of course its early start is also zero so if you subtract zero from zero that is of course zero okay so float per activity a is zero and we can apply the same method okay like per activity b as you can see this one it is eight minus four and that is of course four 
per activity C that is 4 minus 4 which is 0 and do the same method okay just like that like per activity I that is 26 minus 26 so it is also 0 now we got the floats and then of course I'm gonna calculate the variances per each activity and for that I'm gonna use a separate formula which is b minus a divided by 6 whole square okay I'm gonna calculate per one activity and then I'm gonna plug all the values for the remainings just like that all right like I'm gonna calculate the variance per activity a and that is b minus a b this time we got is 3 minus a which is 1 divided by 6 and whole square okay and that's gonna be of course 0 0.111 and so on okay so i'm gonna plug this video as well over there at the print of activity a in the column of variance now just apply and uh, uh, use the same formula and work out the variance for each activity for the remaining activities okay i'm gonna plug these videos just like that all right now the next thing i'm gonna do is to determine the standard deviation of the project i'm not talking about the standard deviation of each activity i'm talking about the standard deviation of the project okay which can be sigma square equals the variance of activities which does have zero float just as you can see activity a does have zero float activity c does have zero float activity h and activity i these guys have zero float okay so i'm gonna take the summation of these guys variances all right like this time as you can see 0 0.111 plus 1.777 which is activity c okay with zero float and plus 0.444 and that is activity f of course as you can see this one okay it does have zero float and then zero and zero at the end for activity h in i all right now as you can see we need sigma only just the standard deviation of the project net sigma square so i'm gonna put square roots on both sides okay just to remove the square from sigma and now uh, as you can see square okay this square and square root cross each other so we can take of course and we can get of course the sigma equals 1.5 to 7 all right if you remember we were asked to determine the critical path which is done then the standard deviation and variance of each activity which is also done now we're going to calculate the probability of 36 days okay just in percentage okay for which i'm gonna use expected time is 32 days tcp this time i have represented this with tcp okay in many books it is represented with mayo uh it is mayo or any other word i don't remember that okay so this time i have represented it with tcp and if you if you remember the probability or the project which we're gonna check for is time 36 days okay so we're gonna check the probability of the project okay using 36 days is the time all right now we're gonna use and we're gonna calculate the z video which can be t minus tcp divided by sigma which is the standard deviation of the project as you can see z equals t which is known 36 days minus tcp which is of course 32 days divided by sigma which is 1.527 now don't just challenge this okay as you can see the expected time is 32 days okay and we are checking it for the 36 days that means the project can be completed in 36 days 100 percent no that's of course wrong okay because we cannot depend on uh, uh, the mean time you can say okay we are analyzing three types of timing the optimistic most likely and pessimistic okay so we can't say that it can be completed in 36 days okay it is not 100 percent that's why we're gonna calculate the probability so 36 minus 32 divided by 1.5 to 7 that is going to be 2.61 all right so this is the probability and which is the z video but this time we are not done yet okay i'm gonna look for the 
the percentage value in the table okay i'm gonna just jump into a table just wait a minute okay it was sent by my teacher and we're gonna look for the z video it was 2.61 i think if you remember and i'm gonna look for 2.61 as you can see i got 2.6 okay and now 0 0.01 i'm gonna look for 0 0.01 which is this column so i'm gonna look in the second column okay at the front of this one 2.6 so this is the video okay which i need and that is 0 0.99547 okay 0 0.99547 i'm gonna jump into my presentation again so the video was 0 0.99547 now we're gonna multiply this video with 100 okay in order to determine the probability in percentage and that is going to be 99.547 percent okay so the probability per 36 days is 99.547 percent and this is how we can determine the critical path standard deviation variances and the probability of the project's time okay using pert method hey if you like these types videos please hit that subscribe button Press the bell icon and never miss an update from an engineer boy. Thank you dears for watching. See you next time. Hello salam.